What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and there are a lot of settings enabled by default on your iPhone, some of which are good for your overall experience, but some are only turned on to benefit Apple. So we're gonna take a look at over 13 of these iPhone settings that you should strongly consider turning off right away. First up is a setting to disable those really annoying pop-ups in third-party applications that ask you to review the application. You guys know when you're browsing in an application, you're playing a game and it asks you to review the application in the app store, it's extremely annoying and I have never liked that, but you do have the option to turn that off. So you go to your settings and go to app store and then right here you will see in-app ratings and reviews. Go ahead and disable that if you don't want to see those pop-ups asking you to review the application. And while we're here, I would also consider turning off the toggle for apps under automatic downloads and especially on cellular. So I would turn off automatic downloads. Basically all this does is download applications onto all your devices if it's downloaded onto one device. So if I downloaded an app on my iPad, it would automatically start downloading it to my iPhone if I had this apps toggle enabled. And if I'm on cellular, if I had automatic downloads enabled right here as well. So I like turning that off. I like downloading different applications for different devices, but I don't mind if I have automatic downloads for updates to the previously installed applications. Now the next setting is a little bit speculative, but it's something I've noticed over time. And that is to disable the face ID with a mask feature if you're not constantly wearing a mask. And the reason I say it's speculative is because for me, I've noticed a slight reduction in accuracy when out and about if I'm not wearing a mask, but I have face ID with a mask turned on. So I like turning that off now, even after having it set up, and it's easy to go ahead and enable it. You don't have to rescan your face or anything like that. So it's very easy to just turn off, you know, and if I'm planning on wearing a mask, for a long period of time, of course, I'll turn it back on, but when I'm not using a mask, I like to keep that disabled just to make sure I have as accurate of a read on my face as possible. And while we're in this section, I would also recommend turning off password autofill. That way you don't have to scan your face or put in your passcode every single time you want to autofill a passcode in Safari or whatever application you're in. Because if you're already in the phone, if you've already unlocked the phone, obviously it's you using it. And even if it's not, if it's somebody else using it, they already have access to your phone. They already know your password code so you may as well just have password autofill turned off that saves a lot of time when putting in passcodes automatically and then the last thing i'll mention in this section is if we go all the way down to the bottom to allow access when locked I would recommend turning off some of these that you don't want anybody having access to when your phone is locked, especially the wallet toggle right here. If you don't want anybody being able to pay with Apple Pay when your phone is locked, like if somebody stole your phone and they wanted to you know, send themselves some money, they could do that if they had access to wallet from the lock screen. So I would turn that off and also any of these others that you would like to turn off. I know some people like to turn off the today view and search so that nobody could search for anything on your phone while it's locked. But I would just go down here here and just change these, turn these off based on how much privacy you want from the lock screen. Another setting you might want to consider turning off is under the messages section. So if you go to messages and then down to text message forwarding, if you don't want all of your text messages sent to all of your other devices that are logged in to your Apple ID, you could turn that off right here. So if you go into here, you have these kill switches for all of your devices, and I would recommend turning that off unless you want all of your text messages to be forwarded to all of your other Apple devices that are logged in with your Apple ID. Next up is private relay. So if you go to your iCloud settings and then go to private relay, you will see the toggle for it right there. And don't get me wrong, this feature is very good for privacy. It hides your IP address and your browsing activity in Safari, which is nice, but if you're noticing slower speeds and battery drain, it could be because of Private Relay. I know I've noticed slower speeds consistently really ever since it came out when I have this enabled. So what I personally do is I keep it turned off right here, but if I go back to my Wi-Fi settings and then tap on the little eye right here, I do have limit IP address tracking turned on and private Wi-Fi address turned on as well under my Wi-Fi you know, network right here. And you can change this per Wi-Fi network. So if you don't want to hide your IP address or have a private Wi-Fi address, you can disable that if you want to on a specific network. So that's one thing to consider changing in your settings as well. Next up is location services. And I talk about this all the time in my videos, but if you go to your settings and go to privacy and then to location services, there are a few things in here that you should be aware of and that you might want to turn off. So first off, I would never recommend turning off the location services, the main kill switch up top. Instead, I would go down here to the applications and then down a little bit further to system services as well. So for example, we have ESPN right here. Let's go into ESPN. 
This is an application that doesn't really need to know my location all the time. So while using the application, I don't think it even needs that. So I'm just going to go ahead and do never. But even if I did have it turned on for maybe like ask next time or when I share, it doesn't need my precise location. So if you go into any of these and it has a precise location toggle, I would go ahead and turn that off. A lot of social media apps have that and you don't really need these social media applications knowing your precise location. And when you turn this off, applications can only determine your approximate location and not your exact location. So I would recommend turning off precise location for pretty much everything except for like maps and navigation applications, or maybe like the home application apps like that are really the only ones that need to know your precise location. And then if we go down to system services right here, we have a ton of toggles, but I think turning these off really take away from the experience of your iPhone. So I would really not recommend turning any of these off unless you just want to take away a lot of functionality of your phone. But one that I would consider turning off is significant locations. So if you go into this section in your settings, you will have the kill switch right here for significant locations. And I would just go ahead and turn that off. And the reason being is because all this does is track your locations and shows you the places that you go the most. So obviously tracking your location all the time will eat up your battery life and your data if you are on a limited data plan. The next setting has to do with the podcast application. So if you go into your podcast right here, you know when you go into a podcast and you want to save an episode let's just say we want to save this one right here let's go to these three dots save episode by default not only would it save that episode it would also download it to your phone for offline listening and if you're like me you're not really ever offline too often so all that does is take up space on your phone but you can disable that so if you go to your settings and go to podcasts and then down here you will see download when saving make sure to turn that off I would also recommend turning off automatic downloads over cellular reason being is because anytime you download something over cellular, it takes up a lot of battery life. It really kills battery life. So I would recommend turning that off. Also automatic download. I just have that turned to off period, but you can change that there if you would like to. I do also like to have hide played episodes turned off but you could change that to whatever you like. So just a few there for the podcast application. The next one has to do with your personal hotspots. So if you go to your settings here and then to personal hotspots, you will see this section right here for maximize compatibility. And I would recommend turning that off unless you are just very far away. The tether devices are very far away from each other. So what this does is basically having this turned off allows you to utilize the five gigahertz band and not 2.4. So the only reason you'd want to use this feature and turn this on is if your devices are far away. If you're tethering a device that's far away, maybe more than like 10 feet. I don't know the exact measurement, but you know, you should turn this off most of the time if you want speed over compatibility, which for most people, I would think that you would only be connecting one device at a time. So I'd recommend turning that off. Next up is one of the first settings I disable every single time I get a new iPhone. And that is this feature right here raise to wake. So if you go to your settings and display and brightness, you will see raise to wake. I always turn that off just because I find this feature rather annoying. And I find that it happens on accident a lot. Like I don't actually want to wake up my phone, but it thinks I do just because I changed the angle where I lift it up a little bit. So I like turning that off. And speaking of battery life, one of the main contributors to battery drain is background app refresh. So if you go to your settings, general background app refresh, I would strongly consider turning this off for certain applications, really most applications, especially social media apps. And the reason being is because those social media applications update constantly in the background. They refresh constantly in the background. That way, every time you go into there, you're gonna see the latest content populate right away. But you don't need that. It's going to contribute to a lot of battery drain. And I would only recommend having this on for things that use your location, like your maps, you know, maybe the Tesla application, shortcuts if you're running automations, things like that. But for the majority of these, they should be turned off. I would not turn off the main kill switch just because most of them, or some applications do need to have background app refresh turned on, but you can change that to Wi-Fi only if you want to, although it's not a big difference either way. And then the final setting that you should strongly consider turning off is inside of cellular. And then all the way down to the very bottom, you will see actually two toggles here. So we have iCloud Drive and iCloud Backup. I would recommend turning both off. 
And the reason being is because you're probably going to be on Wi-Fi at some point. There's no reason to have your iCloud drive, you know, transferring over files and your iCloud backup happening when you're going to be on Wi-Fi at some point in the next couple of days. And it's just going to eat away at your battery life and also your cell data. And Apple even mentions that right here. It says this may cause you to exceed your cellular data plan. So definitely keep both of these turned off. Also Wi-Fi assist. You can see here it says automatically use cellular data when Wi-Fi connectivity is poor. You can turn that on if you want to. I like to just keep that off. But anyways, guys, there you have it. Those are some settings that you should strongly consider turning off on your iPhone here in 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got something out of it. If you learned something, let me know in a comment down below. If you disagree with anything I said, also let me know down in the comment below. I don't ever claim to be right on everything. And if I'm wrong on something or if I have a, a wrong thinking about something, let me know in a comment down below. I'd love to hear your stance on whatever subject you're talking about. But if you guys did enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe for more coverage like this more iphone tips and tricks videos a lot of ios update videos things like that but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon